Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Why is there no light here? I don't hear a lamp. You're supposed to be getting one. I don't burst the light. I'm crying out loud. Oh, it's not plugged in. Oh, it needs to be plugged in. Oh. Oh. Wow, that was easy. So if we can learn how to receive the grace of God and let God do things through us, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's not just a little scripture that we quote, but you really can. Whatever God wants you to do, you can do it by the grace of God. You say, well then, why am I so frustrated? <laughs> Well, we're going to get there. <laughs> you know, I got a lamp over here. And I... Why is there no light here? I don't hear a lamp. You're supposed to be getting one. I don't, where's the light? I'm crying out loud. Oh, it's not plugged in. <laughs> oh, it needs to be plugged in. Oh. oh, wow, that was easy. Okay, it's like this. If there's a power source here, the power source is God. <laughs> Come on, somebody's getting it already. <laughs> See how smart you are? Revelation, there's a power source right here. Well, it's not the power's fault if the lamp is not plugged in. So here's what we need to do. We just need to plug in. Every time that you feel frustrated, take a moment and plug in. Every time you feel worn out, take a moment and plug in. Don't you dare go out your door in the morning without making sure that you are a full charge, that all of your batteries are fully charged up. Okay, here's another example. Man, we charge everything today. We charge this computer. We check this thing several times a day, see what the charge is on. Man, if it's going down, we go plug her in. Come on, here comes another revelation. iPhone, we got to keep that baby charged up. Oh my gosh. I mean, we just about sooner leave home without our clothes on than leave without our phone. But I bet most people wouldn't drive two blocks to go back and get their Bible. Oh, well, we'll just pretend like I didn't say that. Ah, I'll get it tomorrow, no problem. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna sit in the car and read the Bible at lunch today, but yeah, I can do it another day. We go back to get the phone or we send somebody to get the phone. We're not leaving without the phone. We have got to have the phone because we are so important. Lord only knows we could not be disconnected from everybody we know, not for five seconds. We got to have that. And then we got the iPad. That's got to be charged up. I actually counted and I have 10 devices that I keep charged up. 10. I got this little thing that I wear on my belt that tells me how many steps I'm walking. I want to know that because every step is the calories. <laughs> and then I have this machine that helps lift my face. <laughs> and it has to be charged up so we can lift. And then I got a special little thing for under my eyes. And so that, that has to be charged up. <laughs> Come on, you all know what your house is. I mean, you got power cords going on. You're charging everything but yourself. so frustrated. I don't know why I am so frustrated. I am so sick and tired of this, and I am so frustrated, and God, I just can't take this anymore. Some of you came to this conference tonight saying, God, if you don't show me something tonight, <laughs> I have got to have a word from you tonight. Well, I've got one. Plug in. Hey,
Has anybody noticed that Jesus snuck off all the time? I mean, he'd be right in the middle of ministering to, there'd be thousands of people, and all of a sudden, he'd just walk off. <laughs> Go up into the mountains to pray. They'd chase him there so he'd minister some more, and then he'd go off somewhere else. Now, you know, not trying to add to the Word of God. I've got better sense than to do that. But let, let's just say that, you know, maybe he was getting tired. Maybe some of the dumb stuff the disciples did frustrated him once in a while. <laughs> and maybe he's like, okay, Father, I just got to get away from this for a minute. <laughs> Some of you would just, oh my gosh, when I learned to get away from it before I exploded and just like, okay, my battery's running low. I got to go recharge. And you know what? It doesn't take very long. I mean, you can go lock yourself in a bathroom and charge up in two minutes. Just, okay, God. See, we want to walk in the Spirit. So we need to be smart enough to realize when we've gotten out and we need to go somewhere and get back in. Somebody says, where are you going? I'm out and I'm going to get back in. That'll start a good conversation. Huh? Where are you going? I said, I'm out and I'm going to get back in. I'll be back in a moment. And when I come back, I'll be in and you'll like me better. When I first learned this and I started spending time with God every morning, let me tell you something. I would in no way go out of my house without spending time with God. I just wouldn't do it. I just, I don't have it. I do not have what it takes. If God doesn't help me, I'm done for. Just done for. <laughs> we gotta have God. Frustration equals works of the flesh. I used to have a sign on my refrigerator that said, frustration equals works of the flesh. Because every time we're frustrated, it's us working in the flesh, trying to make something happen that only God can make happen, and He won't make happen until we stop working in the flesh and go to Him and say, God, I need Your grace to make this happen in my life. Amazing. Amazing grace. Do we honestly think that God is going to save us and then let us be frustrated the rest of the time? You know, I remember when God's word frustrated me. Honestly, I would go to church and I'd hear a message, say on the mouth or the mind, or, oh, how about this one? Submission to your husband. <laughs> that was a really good one for me because I didn't even know how to spell submit, let alone do it. You know, I'd been abused by men, and here was my attitude. Ain't no man ever going to tell me what to do again as long as I live. I got a few sisters out there. But then when I fell so much in love with Jesus that I wanted to do everything that he told me to do, no matter how much it hurt or what it cost, then I started thinking, okay, I am willing to be a submissive wife. Whatever that is, I'm going to give it a go. And so I would get this plan. And you know, when we get our plans, we're like a balloon that's full of hot air. We get all, oh, yes, praise God, I'm going to go home, and I'm going to be sweet, and I'm going to serve Dave, and just, you know, yes, you know. I would hear the message, and I would think, oh, yes, I'm going to cook his favorite meal. When he says something I don't like, I'm going to say, yes, honey. <laughs> so I had my plan. My flesh was just full of itself. Well, did you tie that balloon shut? Oh no, there it goes, there it goes. Woo -hoo, hoo, 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 hoo. <laughs> God, I am so sick and tired of this. I try and I try and I try and I try and I don't care what I do, God, nothing ever changes. So 
So there we are. <laughs> and then we'll go blow ourselves up again. <laughs> yes, praise God. I talk too much, I shall be quiet. <laughs> you should have seen me when I decided I was going to be sweet. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Well, I'll tell you some of those stories tomorrow. But Honestly and truly, I'd been a Christian for a long time, but back in the 70s, God really touched my life in a very unique and significant way, and I really fell more deeply in love with Him than ever, and that made me want to do what He wanted me to do, and I got a real hunger for the Word of God. But honestly, until I learned what I'm telling you tonight, the more I, the more I studied, the more messages I heard, the more it frustrated me, because I tried to do every one of them. Have you ever gone to church feeling bad and left feeling worse than you did when you went in? Because you went with three problems, and by the time you left, you knew you had ten. <laughs> I mean, there was not one message that I didn't need. You see, before I seriously wanted to let God change me, I thought Dave had all the problems. I didn't know it was me. Then I found out it was me, and I started trying to change. I can't even begin to tell you how many years I wasted in works of the flesh trying to do what only God could do, being mad at myself, believing God was mad at me, and when I, then I finally learned the same way that I'm saved, that's the same way that I have to walk and live my life, by grace, through faith, by grace, through faith. I go to God, God, I can't do this. I want to do it. I want to please you. I need you to do it in me. And then if I don't see any result the next day, I don't get discouraged by that. I say, God, I believe you're working. I believe you're working. You know, have you ever prayed for somebody and had them actually start acting worse after you prayed for them? <laughs> you know, that's really a good sign. You say it is. Sure it is. That means that the minute you prayed, God started working on them, and that conviction is making them feel worse than they did before. What kind of a silly comment is it to say, well, I've done everything I can. I guess there's nothing left to do but pray. <laughs> you know what? I've learned to just let prayer be like breathing. Just pray about everything. Don't wait to pray. Don't wait until you're going to pray. Oh, yeah, I'll pray about that when I pray. No, pray right now. And here's my most spiritual prayer, the one that I pray hundreds of times every day. Oh, God, help me. <laughs> help me. I, I've got two things that I say more than any. I love you, Jesus. Help me. I love you, Jesus. Help me. I love you, Jesus. Help me. Internally, inside of me, that goes on all day. Before I came up here, I love you, Jesus. Help me. I'm here because I love God and because of what He's done for me. And I don't have much to offer you if God doesn't show up and work through me. And I am so dependent on Him that it is downright frightening. It scares me silly to think about what a mess this would be if God didn't show up. And you know what? He's never failed yet. I've had some meetings that have been better than others, but I can honestly say, and I say this with all humility, we, we, just, we have a good meeting everywhere we go. And it's certainly not because of me. It's because of God. And you'd be amazed what you'll get out of God if you'll just start leaning into Him and pressing into Him. And boy, when you feel like you're losing your charge, you go plug in. You don't let your kids keep you from plugging in. You don't let your friends keep you from plugging in. You don't let shopping keep you from plugging in. You don't let anything keep you from plugging in. You got to go plug in. You got to recharge that battery. Anybody hearing me? You know, how we read the Word is so important. This book is full of promises. But we read it like the law. When I read in here, uh, be kind, that's not a new law. And so now if I'm not kind, God's mad at me. That's a promise. 
that if I trust him and lean into him, that that kindness is in me because he's in me and he will work it through me as I trust him and lean on him. And he doesn't do it all at once just like that. It's little by little from glory to glory, little by little from glory to glory. I get a little bit of progress, I believe. I get a little more progress, I believe. I get a little more progress, I believe. He who hath begun a good work in me is well able to complete it and bring it to its finish. God will not leave us unfinished. He will bring us to our finish as long as we will hang in there with him and keep believing that God is working. Somebody ought to be getting a little relief by now. Anybody somewhere, are you starting to feel like a little, maybe? Oh, you, you mean I don't have to do it? Galatians 3.10 says that as long as we live under the law or as long as we try to be right with God through the law, that we are doomed to disappointment. We're doomed to disappointment. We cannot possibly succeed as long as I read this and think, oh boy, now I gotta be kind, otherwise God's gonna be mad at me. By grace are you saved through faith. It is a gift of God. By grace, are you patient through faith? It is a gift of God. By grace, are you kind through faith? It is the gift of God. Is anybody hearing me? <laughs> by grace, I'm preaching tonight. And I say by faith, doing a good job. <laughs> but it is a gift of God. Amen? It is a gift of God. I can't make myself sing like Israel because he does it by gift of God. I can't make myself evangelize Africa like Reinhardt because he does it by gift of God. But they can't do what I do either. Why don't you stop looking at what everybody else does and comparing yourself to them and start realizing you can do something nobody else can do. You can do something nobody else can do. Amen? Amen? Come on, like yourself. You know what I say every day, and this is going to sound like I'm one of those hot air balloons, but I don't mean it that way at all. I've, got, I've formed this habit lately. Every morning when I first get up, sometimes even before I'm out of bed, I love you, Lord. I love my life. I love myself. And I love people. You love yourself. You love yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't love the fleshly me, but I love the new creation me. I love what God has created on the inside. I embrace that. And that's who I am now in Christ. And God's taking care of the rest of it. Yeah, I'm still a little rough around the edges sometimes, but God knew that when he got me. And he knew all about you when he got you. You're, God is not surprised by you. He's not going, oh my God. Oh, Reinhardt, if I would have known what you were really gonna be like, I would have never called you to evangelize Africa. Never, never. Could have never done that had I really known about all your weaknesses. And Oh, Israel, had I known about all the things that you were going to do, my son, I would have never called you. <laughs> God chooses the weak and the foolish things of the world to confound the wise that no mortal man should have pretense for glorying in his presence. Now, the only kind of people that get help are the humble. The humble get the help. It's a good message. God, help me. <laughs> help me. 1 Peter 5, 5. Y'all doing okay? Come on, I want the pressure to lift off. You just need to say, you know, <laughs> this is it, God.
You're welcome to do something about it. <laughs> you know, I would love to think that I'm never again in my life going to make a mistake with my mouth. But not so much. I doubt that it's really going to happen. <laughs> I've improved. It's taken almost 40 years of being in the Word every day. You know what? I'm a mouth in the body of Christ. It's just sometimes I forget where it needs to function and where it needs to shut up. I tell you, I tried so hard to be quiet and be sweet and be nice, and I'm just like, <laughs> you know what I love about my husband more than anything in the world? Dave just lets me be me. He just, now you know, if I would get rude, Dave would tell me, but he laughs at me. He said, there's that old fire I married you for. <laughs> and you know, God takes us. You know, why don't you do me a favor tonight or do yourself a favor? Why don't you stop just trying to give God everything you think you are and just give him everything you're not? Come on. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, and you can have it all. We're always trying to give him something he thinks he's going to be just, ooh, whoa. <laughs> His strength is made perfect in our weakness. He purposely chooses the weak and the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God doesn't really need ability. He needs availability. You just go and say, here I am, God. If you can do anything with me, here I am. You'd be amazed at what God will do. Isn't that right, Teresa? This girl down here, first time she heard me, she was in prison. And now she preaches the gospel all over the place. Amen. Amen. Stand up, Teresa, and wave at them. They want to see who you are. Oh, my gosh. In prison for, what, selling drugs or possessing drugs? Using drugs and just life was so messed up. Man, I tell you what. God got a hold of her. When God gets a hold of you, he'll turn you into another woman, into another man. Amen? 1 Peter 5, 5. Likewise, you that are younger and of lesser rank, be subject to the elders, the ministers, and the spiritual guides of the church, giving them their due respect and yielding, yielding, <laughs> yielding, to their counsel. So he's already talking about humbling yourself enough to listen to what people want to tell you that have more wisdom from you than you and have been around longer than you have and actually do no more. And clothe yourselves with humility. I think humility is the cardinal virtue. I think if Matter of fact, I, I've been thinking about this a lot, and I think probably all sin is rooted in pride. Because pride was Satan's sin. I, 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 I. Clothe yourselves with humility as the garb of a servant so that its covering cannot possibly be stripped from you. Now we're about to get into the meat of this. With freedom from pride and arrogance toward one another. For God, now here's the thing, part you got to get. For God sets himself against the proud, the insolent, the overbearing, the disdainful, the presumptuous, the boastful, and he opposes, frustrates, and defeats them. Why was I frustrated? Was it my circumstances frustrating me? Was it Dave frustrating me? Was it my children frustrating me? No, this says God was frustrating me. And you say, well, why would God do that? He was trying to teach me that I could not get what I wanted if I didn't humble myself and let him do it. Now, get this. Come on. Come on. 
God is not going to let you do it. And you will be frustrated and going around and around and around the same mountain, just like I did and still do from time to time, until you humble yourself and say, God, I am nothing without you. I can do nothing without you. I need you. Help me. And the humble get the help. <laughs> Well, you know, we all have two choices in life. We can live a life filled with frustration or we can humble ourselves and we can ask God to help us. We can receive his free gift of grace to help us. And that's exactly what we should be doing. medical missions so many times over the past couple years. This is actually the 19th time that I've come into settings just like this. And the sobering reality of the poverty that we see. But that's one thing I love about Hand of Hope is that we get to be a part of, of this solution and that we get to come in and help feed the malnourished and, and help bring medical care to the sick. It's always a blessing to come back to places year after year and see the improvement and watch the community look better and look healthier and to see the children not as, as malnourished. It's, it's incredible. It's so much about sharing. We come here to share God's love, to share the medicine, to share the free care. So these teeth become very, very painful. To share the food and the feeding programs. And one thing I love about God is that he doesn't ask you to give what you don't have, but he asks you to give what you do have. And no matter what that is, it always makes a difference in people's lives. And it truly is about sharing. And that is making a lasting impact on, on people and places just like here in Angacha, Ethiopia.